So today um, I want to show a little nifty piece of hardware. Um, the go-to for most streamers has been uh, the uh, Go XLR, uh, this little thing, or the Go XLR Mini when you are on a budget. Now this is 399 euros in Europe, um, and probably a similar amount in the US, and the Go XLR Mini has actually gone up and cost 179 euros now. And that's not precisely cheap. Now you get for that you get a uh, audio interface for your microphone, and you get like a four-channel fader, and with the full Go XLR you even get um, the sound pads and all that. The stand here for the Go XLR is another thirty-eight euros, um, so it'd be about forty dollars in the US, and uh, there is no stand for the Mini, but. This is not what we want to talk about today, because um, if you don't need the audio interface, if you have, for example, something something like this focus right here, there's a focus sized Scarlett 2i2 or something like that, um, if you have that already, um, then there's a much cheaper solution to get faders and maybe even a more flexible solution to get faders. So we'll take uh, the GoXLA and we'll turn it off. And that was the end of that. What I want to talk about instead is the Korg Nano Control 2. The Korg Nano Control 2 is, um, is a MIDI door surface. And you can actually use any MIDI do uh, door surface that you want. There is both surfaces from Behringer and there is also the Icon um, platform M, M plus, X and X plus, and they all work. But this is the one of the cheapest ones. And what you can do with this is you can, with a, a little piece of software called MIDI Mixer, you can control your volume levels on different devices or applications on your PC. And you can control also other things because there is a OBS plugin for this. So you can control volume levels in OBS. And there is also another plugin for Philips U lights. So, for example, in my studio slash office, I actually use some of these faders to control my U lights and turn them on and off. And that's I found that super useful. So uh, let's get started and um, plug this in. Actually, before we get started, I should probably go and download the software. So we will be installing the Korg USB MIDI drivers as I downloaded them. Just uh, install everything, finish, and then it requires us to restart the system, so we'll do that now. First things first, we'll plug this in now. There's um, a mini USB cable. It's usually at the other end of the box. The first time I unpacked one of these, um, I thought like, hmm, they didn't send me the cable, but I missed it. It was on the other end. <coughs> so that's uh, our little board here. As you can see, it popped up. You must uh, use a Korg MIDI device. Connect uh, to. You must install the. So it has done that. And then we go and we find, here it's called Uninstall Cork USB MIDI device. And it looks like this. So when you go in here, in this, in this particular case, um, we are on MIDI 15. And that is a problem because the Cork Nano Control will not work unless it's in the first 10 slots. So from slot 0 to 9, most programs can't access it or anything. So what I generally do is I go in and I find a, um, a device I can uninstall. So what we do is we go option here and we say we want to delete not only cog devices, right? And then we take these two audio devices here and we uninstall them. Yes. Finish. We then go, we restart the uninstall app 
and you can see it has moved to MIDI 2. Now for a good measure, I will be restarting the computer now, just so it reinstalls the USB audio interfaces that I just removed. And I'll make sure that the Korg Nano Control still is in the first 10 slots. That's where a lot of people go, uh, basically fail with the Korg Nano Control um, when they want to get it to, to work. Now you can use this Korg Nano Control obviously as a MIDI DAW recorder like Ableton or the likes. You can use it in the fashion I will show you today with MIDI Mixer. And I will be making another video how you integrate Korg Nano Control into um, voice meter if you want to use that. But for today it's just MIDI Mixer we're going to use. So we're back here. We start the uninstall Korg MIDI tool again. And you can see we are still in, um, in MIDI 2. So that's perfect. And everything else looks good. So yeah, just make sure that your Korg Nano Control ends up in the first 10 slots. The next thing we do is um, find MIDI Mixer. I will be leaving links down below. So MIDI Mixer is a free slash donationware software. Um, there's a limitation that if you don't pay for the subscription, you only have maximum one plugin. But in most cases, that's more than sufficient. This is the download. Uh, open Microsoft Store. Oh yeah, there it is. So we get it from the Microsoft Store. That shouldn't take too long. It's about 120 megabytes. Close the website. You then want it to connect and you want it for private networks because you might want to interact with other things. And it starts out like this. And has already figured out that we have a Korg Nano Control, which is perfect. We'll quick look to the settings. It's been a while for me. I want to start this on boot. I want to start this mini moist. That's all okay. So it's all set. That's great. Ah, oh yeah. So here, if you create an account, you can then get additional stuff. Here are the plugins. And where is it? There's at the moment. Here, here. Go back here and we say. Uh, MIDI Mixer Plugins GitHub. Um, so on the MIDI Mixer GitHub, you will find the plugin OBS, plugin Discord, and the plugin U. So if you don't pay for the subscription, you can only install. You can install all of them, but you can only use one of them. But it means you can, on top of your volumes, you can also control either Discord or OBS or U. I've used for example U for Philips U lights, um, but the Discord and the OBS obviously would also be beneficial. So these are, it's fairly straightforward and it's all, them, uh, all documented on how you do it. So if you go, for example, the U plugin here, um, you have uh, download the plugin, extract the plugin where, where it's supposed to go, and then basically restart the application. That's all good. So the first thing we do now is we'll go in and in the, let's see here, we want to assign, so Fader 8 I want to configure, right? And I put it as my headphones Arctis Pro wireless game. So it's my main fader. When we look here, I can control the volume and I can mute or unmute with this. So that's perfect. Um, then let's see what, we, what else we have. We have here. So we have we have all our hardware interfaces, but even better, it also has programs. Now you need to start the program first. So let's say I start, um, I have Spotify and I start a song here. Right? So what happens now is I can now go into fader one here and Spotify becomes an option. 
So let's say I want uh, Fader 7 is my Spotify. And that means now I can control the volume for Spotify separately from all other audio. Um, so I can go in and I have the volume on full, but I have Spotify, let's say, running at medium in the background. And this is all, all of these are the Windows volume controls from the volume mixer. So if, if I take the volume mixer here, see this, this is the Windows volume mixer. And as I move this up and down, it changes these. So that's, uh, that's what that is. And then again, the same thing is I start Chrome. Okay. And um, let's say I put this over on the other screen and I start YouTube. Um, and I just start basically you see there's, there's volume levels now coming from Chrome, right? Now I can go in and I can say I want a volume level for Chrome here. So you can assign different applications and different volumes to all of this. So for example, also if you have a microphone connected here, let's see, let's actually put Chrome down here. Chrome down here. So for example, let's say I use for my stream or for my game, I use the microphone from the uh, Arctis Pro headset. Headset earphone, headset microphone there. So that's my microphone. But yeah, so basically now I have an, on number one here, I have the microphone. So I have my microphone then here and I can control that. So for the moment for 55 euros in black, and 59 euros in white, depending on where you get them. So around 55 to 60 euros, and it's probably similar in the US, um, you get a really cheap solution to get a very, very similar uh, functionality to what the Go XLR would give you if you just want um, adjustable faders. And with the plugins, you can even go in and you can control volumes in Discord or OBS or somewhere else. So um, that should um, help quite a bit for a minimalist extreme setup without the cost of a Go XLR or Go XLR Mini. I hope this helps and um, I'll see you in another video. Thank you very much.